Okay, now let's do some stoichiometry where mass is involved. Now, here's an equation where we say we've got some lead 2 nitrate in solution reacting with some sodium chloride, and we have a quantity of sodium chloride, 5.50 moles, and here's the reaction that occurs. What is the mass of precipitate that can form? Well, first of all, when you do the double replacement reaction, you're going to take those two aqueous solutions, mix them together, and when the lead 2 here goes with the chloride and the sodium goes with the nitrate in this fashion here, the lead 2 chloride, when you check the solubility chart, is a low solubility compound. It's a solid. That's the precipitate. We're asking ourselves how much of that can form. First thing, balance the equation. So we've got one lead, one lead, two nitrates. We're going to have two of these here, two sodiums. We're going to put a two there, two CLs, two CLs. There we go. The balancing is one, two, one, two. There's the moles here. We'll say that it's reacting with excess lead 2 nitrate. That has to be stated. We've got this limiting quantity here. How much of this can we form in grams? Okay. So then we say to ourselves, well, all right, here we go. We've got 2 point, oh, I'm sorry. We've got 5.5, 5.5 moles of sodium chloride. We don't want moles of sodium chloride. This equation is in moles, 1 to 2 to 1 to 2. It's the mole ratio. We don't want sodium chloride, NaCl, in terms of its moles. We would like to know how many mole. Oh, we would actually like to know how many grams of this can form. But we can't use this information and directly find grams here. We have to find the moles first and then find the grams. You see, the equation here, the equation speaks molish and it only understands moles. So if we got moles here, we're going to find moles here. We're not going to find grams right away. We have to go through another step. But you're used to actually unit cancellation involving more than one step, so here it goes. 5.50 moles of sodium chloride. Don't want moles of sodium chloride. Want moles of PbCl2. Got to go through that first. What's the ratio? It's two of those for every one of those. Then times. Times what? Well, we don't want moles of PbCl2, what do we want? Well, we want the grams of it, and we do have a ratio of grams to moles of that. It's called the molar mass. So, here is the PbCl2 in grams per mole, and by the way, when you do 207.21 uh, uh, plus 70.90, you're going to get a number, 278.11. 278.11 grams, that's the molar mass of this, per mole, equals, do the math, the unit cancellation is moles of that with that, moles of that, and moles of that. Leaves you with the grams of the PBCL2, and I get 764.8. 764.8 grams, but whoa! Two ziggy diggy, infinite, infinite, five ziggy diggy, one, that, that's infinite ziggy diggy. So you're going to have to keep the lowest number of significant digits, which is two. That means one, two, 7.6 times 10 squared grams of PBCL2. And that is the answer to that there. Okay, now let's have a different question. The question here is, all right, now we've got potassium hydroxide in solution, and we have this mass of it here, and we want to know the mass of this iron 2 hydroxide that can form according to this equation. Now, first of all, balance the reaction. We've got 1K, 1K, 1OH, 2OHs. Two now, we've got two Ks, and we got two of those, we got two CLs, but we got two here, so it's going to be a two to one to one to two ratio here. You've got grams here, and you want to find grams here. Dumb kid alert. Dumb kid goes like this. Well, it's a two to one ratio here, so divide that by two and you get the answer here. Hey, the equation speaks molish. It does not understand gramish. And so you've got to take these grams, and before you do anything with them, before you can actually find out the moles here making the moles here, you've got to turn this into moles. So now look at the problem. You actually have to find the moles, and then do a ratio of moles here to moles here. But once you find the moles here, you're not satisfied, you have to turn that into grams. Looks like it's kind of multi-step here, huh? Break it down simply, start with the quantity that you know. I'm going to work up here on this one. Start with that quantity that you know and then work your way through in a dimensional analysis unit cancellation method and you're going to be fine. So we're starting with 1.81 grams of KOH because that's what we're starting with. 
I don't want grams of KOH. I want the moles of KOH because once I know the moles here, I can figure out the moles here. What is this going to be? 56.11 is the molar mass of KOH, which is 39.10 plus 16 plus 1.01. .01. Check it out. I don't want moles of KO moles of KOH. What do I want? Well, I want the grams of this, but you can't do grams yet. You gotta find the moles first. The equation speaks molish. And so you're gonna have this ratio here of reaction for moles of KOH to moles of FeOH2. And it's 2 to 1. Sure, you can see that. 2 to 1. Now that you've got this in terms of moles, now use the molar mass and finish the reaction. Times, and then you don't want moles of FeOH2. You want the grams of the FeOH2. And the molar mass of that is 89.87. Uh, yep, 89.87. By the way, that's grams per mole of this chemical. Ah, one Fe in the molar mass, right? Two O's and two H's. Careful. And then, of course, what does that equal? When you do this math here, I get 1.449, 1.449 grams of FeOH2. Problem? That's not sig digs. Four there, infinite, 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 that. Three, three, 1.45 grams of that chemical. Just remember, you got grams, turn them into moles. You got it in the end, just find that quantity in moles for the equations and then turn it into what you need.